Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by the King's Men and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with It's High Time. disturbed period of our history have come a few great songs. One that I like especially from the last war is Keep the Home Fires Burning. It's more than a song. It's an expression of the deep significance of home that a man feels when he's away from it. And it points to the great daily service that women of our families give us, keeping the homes cheerful, clean, comfortable, livable. That's a very important service, never more appreciated than now. Women who practice protective housekeeping with the regular use of Johnson's Wax find their work easier and results more satisfactory. Housekeeping authorities recommend Johnson's Wax not only for protection, but also for the great beauty it gives to floors, furniture, and woodwork, and to windowsills, shoes, luggage, Venetian blinds, lampshades. You can give all these things a longer life of service with genuine Johnson's Wax in paste, liquid, or cream wax form. the lady of the house at 79 Wistful Vista is a pretty calm individual, taking the antics of her husband as minor phenomena in an otherwise normal life. But his maneuvers the past few days have even her a little perturbed. And here, one making faces at himself in a mirror and the other watching him in wonder, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. McGee, please stop making those faces. What on earth is the matter with you? I'm rehearsing. Rehearsing for what? Do they need an air raid warden for the monkey house at the zoo? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm practicing to be a comedian. Comedian? Yeah, what our country needs right now is a lot of laughs. Oh. How are they going to get them? New comedians, that's the answer. I see. Sure. You're the chap that replaces Chaplin and the Abbott in lieu of Costello. <laughs> Uh, roughly, that's the idea. Well, roughly, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I thought so, too. What do you mean, ridiculous? I know whereof I'm speaking about. Remember that picture me ma we made with Ed Bergen and his little petrified partner? Look who's... <laughs> you mean, look who's laughing? Yeah. Well, uh, what about it? They never give me a, a proper break in that picture. <laughs> I can be a lot funnier and I can prove it. Yeah? Oh, I was great in the heavy stuff and the romantic scenes, but... You didn't have any romantic scenes. And why not? Jealousy, that's why. Oh. Afraid I'd steal the picture. So now I'm going to make a few reels of home movies and show them producers that McGee is really comical. Oh, dear. Yeah. Such modesty. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hide your light under a bushel, dearie, it'll be a million candle-powered light under a cellophane bushel. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me what... Oh. That's probably a delivery boy I'm expecting. I'll get it. What have you ordered now? A corsage of shrinking violets? <laughs> Better be a shrinking violet than a silly aster. <laughs> Come in. Mr. Fibber McGee live here? That's me, sis. Package for you from the Wistful Vista Home Movie Company. Sign here, please. Oh, okay. Now, here you are. <laughs> I was expecting a boy. So was my father, but life is full of surprises. <laughs> Ah, he means he thought the delivery boy would be a, a boy, dearie. Oh, uh, our delivery boy joined the army. Oh, good for him, sis. What outfit? Brown suit, leather belt, overseas cap and leggings. It's the latest style. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what part of the army, dearie? Uh, 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 you know what they say, lady. Keep your trap shut and nobody will get caught in it. Good day. <laughs> Smart babe, take an appendectomy to get anything out of her. <laughs> well, uh, what did you get at the home movie shop, McGee? As if I didn't suspect. Ah, oh, wait till I show you. 
Uh, oh, a little movie camera. Yeah, the six reels of film. Now, I'm going to make my own screen test and send it to Hollywood. I'm going to send Prince to Zanuck and Warner Brothers and Sam Goldwyn and RKO and... And uh, Swift and Company. <laughs> Swift and Company. They make pictures? They've got what it takes. <laughs> but now look, <clears throat> look here, you funny fella. Huh? Uh, how can you do your comical acting and take your own picture at the same time? Ah, that's where you come in. You're going to be the cameraman. Oh, no, you don't. Sure. No, no, I won't be a party to it. I may tolerate your foolishness, but I won't put you on a negative, And that's positive. <laughs> Now, don't look at me like that, McGee. After all... It's, it's okay, Molly. You you just haven't got faith in me. That's all. Let go. But, McGee, don't you see Forget that... it, Molly. I, well, when a guy's own wife ain't got any confidence in a guy. <laughs> How can you expect a guy McGee, to... McGee, huh? give me that camera. How do you work it? Here, it's all loaded. Now, where I set it for indoor work? There. Now I'll set it for fast action. There we are. Now all you got to do is look at me through this little dingus and press this button, see? What? <laughs> well, how do I stop it? Take your finger off the button is all. <laughs> you catch on? Well, I guess so. But now listen, I warn you, this first reel may be pretty wobbly. Oh, that's all right. We'll, we'll give it a gag title like maybe How Green Was My Molly. Oh. <laughs> oh, that'll kill him. <laughs> And none too soon, either. <laughs> After they see this, they will have seen everything. Yeah. Well, what do we do now? Now, look. First, I'll do a fast scene, see? You point the camera at the door, and I'll come dashing in like the cops were after me. Yeah. Then I'll knock over the end table and get all snarled up in the lamp cord. Oh, my That's God. always good. <laughs> now, now, remember, keep the camera on me. Uh, wait till I put a funny hat on, and I'll be right back. Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I gotten into now? Are these the wages of cinema? <laughs> Side the camera, Molly. Here I come. That's it, Molly. Cut. Cut what? Cut the pill. What with? No, 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 no. Stop it. Take your finger off the button. <laughs> that ought to be terrific. Did you catch the funny look on my pants? McGee. Pan? Huh? Why, you're all cut on the arm. You fell on that broken lamp. Oh, forget it. Once I get into the real thing, I'll have a stuntman to do the hard stuff for me. <laughs> hey, let's run through that scene again. I just thought of another way to do it. This time, I'm going to do a flip-flop across the radio. Oh, dear. Now, get ready. No wonder they sell candy in theaters. It keeps the audience from grinding their teeth. <laughs> all right, dearie. Here I come. Thank you.
for goodness sakes, McGee. Hold still. How can I dab this stuff on your neck if you keep wiggling like this out then? Yeah, don't forget now. That's iodine you're using, not soothing syrup. Well, it's your own fault. Oh. You might have known if you slid down that banister, you'd sail across the hall. Boy, I bet you got a wonderhead wig on in them size 12 shoes. How much... Oh! oh. Reels. How much skinny you got? Ah, what's a few bruises? You know what I'm going to do for the next shot, Molly? Uh, I'm going to go up on the roof and jump off with an umbrella for a parachute. Oh. <laughs> That'll be a panic. No, no, McGee. I won't let you do it. Oh, why not? We can get a new umbrella for three bucks. <laughs> yeah, but can you get a retread on your sacro <laughs> I won't hurt myself. I know how to fall. Red Skelton showed me. Just relax. Come in. Oh, hello there, Mr. Oldtimer. Won't you come in? No, oh, thanks, daughter. Just dropped by to borrow a pair of water wings. Oh, hello there, Johnny. Hi, Oldtimer. We don't have any water wings, but have a chair. Don't you know this is be kind to your metatarsals week? <laughs> Won't you get it, Molly? I said this. Ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> Wouldn't even be funny if I knew what a metatarsal was, Johnny. Metatarsal is a bone in your back. Mm. No, it's not. It's a bone in your foot. Oh, I know, but uh, he'll find my foot in his back if he ain't more civil. <laughs> what you doing, Johnny? Studying medicine? Sure smells like a hospital in here. Oh, he got cut and bruised a little, Mr. Oldtimer, and I've been doctoring him up. Yeah, but as I always say, I'm an easy bruise, but a quick heal. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. That ain't the way I hear it. The way I hear it, one feller says to tell a feller, See, he says. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do if the government won't leave me buy enough sugar? Sure, says t'other feller, to whom it was an awful old joke, raise Cain. <laughs> well, if you have no water wings, I guess I'll be scooping along. Well, what do you want with water wings this time of the year? I'm going skating down the lake, daughter, and I hear the ice is getting thin. So long, kids. <laughs> World. Now, let's see. Be good at the camera, Molly. We'll take this one out in the kitchen. I'll load up my arms with grub and dishes, see? Then I'll trip over a chair and crash the whole business. <laughs> Maybe wind up with ketchup streaming all down my oh. face. How's that, huh? Delightful. Uh -huh. Delightful. Let's use my best Haviland china, too. Oh, fine. We might as well put a little class into this picture. Oh, swell. We'll show them we spared no expense when it comes to making... Oh, oh. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Harlow. Come on in and watch us make some home movies. Say, you'd better take it easy, pal. You look like you'd lost an argument with an octopus holding eight buzz saws. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Siri, I can't quit now. I'm going to finish this job. We only got two reels of film left, and I got to get them developed and sent to Hollywood. Do you see how stubborn he is, Mr. Wilcox? Yeah. He's a regular Cecil B. DeMule. <laughs> Well, let's see a sample of this giggle opera. Okay, come on out in the kitchen. Better take some of my good glassware, too, McGee. Okay, I'll take... Stop that! <laughs> Use the old jelly glasses. They break just as funny as my crystalware. What's the scenario, Fibber? Oh, scenario, we're taking a picture. Now watch. <laughs> I pile this stuff up on my arm, see? Like this. Yeah. You get the camera ready, Mom. Go ahead, dearie, I'm ready. Now, when I say go, start the film. I'll pretend I'm getting myself a snack out of the icebox. Yeah. Then I trip and fall with a big crash, see? <laughs> This'll be a howl. Skip the build-up. Make with the funny stuff. Okay. Okay. Action, camera. <laughs> now, let's see. Half a dozen eggs, a bowl of salad, some tomatoes, a bottle of milk, a couple of bananas. That's enough. Look out for that chair, Fibber. Huh? Better do it over again, McGee. You didn't break either arm. <laughs> oh, that was a honey, wasn't it? Did you get the surprise expression on my puss when Wilcox hollered at me? 
That'll register swell. Yeah. Look at the mess on my kitchen floor. Huh? Let me take the camera, Molly, quick. While that milk and those eggs are still oozing together. Here, but what are you going Get to... Get a damp cloth, quick. What? I'll shoot you as you wipe those things off the Johnson glow-coated floor, see? Wonderful scene. Oh, I see. All right. Start going. Hey, wait a minute. Don't use that film for that. I only got a few people... Out of the way, Fibber. You're in the light. What? That's it, Molly. Yes. This will show how easily spots and stains are wiped off a of glow-coated linoleum. Yes. Keep smiling. Ah, <laughs> oh, swell. No trouble at all, you see. But now another little spot on the left there. That's it. Now face the camera and spread your hands out to show how easy it's been. Yes, but... Oh, that's great. Say, who's making these movies anyway? What will Sam Goldwyn say when he sees Did you get it all right, Mr. Wilcox? I think so, and great, too. You know what they say, one picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I got a few thousand choice words for anybody that'll butt into a guy's career like that. It's a fine thing. We'll send you a print of it, Mr. Wilcox. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks a lot. I'll write a title for it. Something like, uh, in these days of strife and wars, you save your wife and save your floors. Self-polishing glow coat throughout the nation is quite an item in conservation. I'll run home and write that down before I forget it. (laughs) Why, that big palooka, he ruined the whole scene. That's nothing to what you ruined, dearie. Just look at your shirt. What's the matter with it? Well, that's the first combination salad I ever saw with sleeves. (laughs) And why are you holding your elbow? Oh, I cracked it when I fell over the chair. Just temporary. I can get it fixed. Come in. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? Hello, McGee. Well, Mayor Latrivia, don't pay any attention to McGee's looks, Mr. Mayor. I never do. (laughs) He had a little accident in the kitchen. Yeah, I was... uh... Hey, look who Latrivia's got with him, Molly. Hi there, little girl. Hi, Mr. McGee. Well, I didn't know you were a pal of the mayor, sis. Ain't you starting to round up the boats kind of early to trivia? (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me, please. I'll go call the camera shop while you talk to the mayor, McGee. Uh, Certainly, Mrs. McGee. McGee, I was walking past your house, and I found this child making marks on your front sidewalk with a piece of red chalk. Marks on our sidewalk? Hmm? Wow. Well, now, suppose you explain yourself, sis. Well, gee, mister, I was just helping my daddy. How? Hmm? I says how. How what? (laughs) How were you helping your daddy? Drawing chalk marks on your sidewalk. I know that, but what's that got to do with how... You try it, Latrivia. Huh? Oh, very well. Now, listen, little girl. Defacing community property is a misdemeanor. Who's she? Who's who? Misdemeanor. She isn't anybody. She's... Now, listen... Marking up a sidewalk is very rude. It's unsightly. Hi, Noah. Then why did you do it? I was helping my daddy. How were you helping your daddy by drawing chalk marks on Mr. McGee's sidewalk? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I was. I'm in... <laughs> okay, McGee, take it. <laughs> now, sis, let's be sensible. Did your old man... I mean, did your daddy tell you to mark up my sidewalk? No, but somebody had to do it, I betcha. Why? Hmm? I says, why did somebody have to do it? Because my daddy said so, I bet you. No, we're getting somewhere, McGee. Well, I don't know where. Now, just what did your daddy say that made you mark up his sidewalk? Well, my mommy and my daddy are going to have a party. And they were talking about who was going to be at the party. Yes, 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 yes. And my mommy said, how about the McGee? Yes. And my daddy said, no, sir. We got to draw the line at the McGee's. And so I ran out and did it. (laughs) Take it, La Trivia. So long, McGee. Men sing What's Buzzin', Cousin? What's buzzin', Cousin? What goes on with that look in your eye? What's buzzin', Cousin? Does it mean what I think it implies? What's tickin', Chicken? What gives out with that cute little grin? What's knittin', Kitten? How's a bob in my mouth am I in? Oh, come on, let's have our fling. We know that spring has sprung a hung. Ask your mother to hold her tongue. She had a fellow when she was young. What's buzzing, cousin? What you say to a cuddle or two? What's cutting, button? What's dunking, punkin'? What's buzzing with you? 
buzzing with your cousin. Baby, what's what with you? You got a fatal, fatal, fatal fascination. fascination. It's a wonder I'm not under observation. What's yummy with your mommy? Here's a cue for such a beautiful thrill. What's a cooking, pretty looking? Would you trade and I won't, for I will. Wish I knew just how to say, come kiss me in Hawaiian. Give me up a wanna, honey, how I really wanna. You can't kill a guy for trying. What's buzzing, cousin? You got him for the capital. Ooh, what's ducky wucky? What's hotsy totsy? What's tooty fruity? What's boogie woogie? Baby, what's one with you? so fast, Molly. Don't forget I got a sprained ankle. No, I'm not forgetting your ankle, dearie. Or your cracked elbow, or your cut neck, or your lame back, or your loose teeth, or your bruised ribs. <laughs> Did I cover everything? You forgot my skin knee. <laughs> well, it's only another block to the camera shop. That's good. When did they say the films would be ready? Well, they're rushing them. I told the man you wanted to, to send them to Hollywood. Oh, what did he say? Well, he just made a funny noise and hung up. <laughs> Are you suffering terribly, dearie? I sure am, but it was worth it. If these films don't prove I'm a marvelous comedian, I'll eat my hat. Say, what size hat do you wear? Seven and a quarter. Why? Well, I'm going to weave you one out of spaghetti or something. I always like to see you enjoy what you eat. Look, McGee, here comes Mrs. Uppington. Oh, boy, get a load of that lid. Does Ruth Goldberg own a hat shop? <laughs> She never got that monstrosity out of a hat shop. Oh, boy. That's an old bird's nest built by a cross-eyed blue jay. <laughs> I never saw... Oh, hello, Abigail, darling. Where did you get that lovely hat? <laughs> oh, how do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee. Hi, Upsy. Uh, do you really like it, Mrs. McGee? Well, I never saw anything like it. Uh, me either. But once when I was looking at a drop of swamp water through a microscope... McGee. <laughs> Abigail, darling, is that an original creation? Oh, but of course, my dear. I have the most marvelous milliner. You must let me take you down there sometime, Mrs. McGee. She could do wonders for you. Uh -huh. I've often remarked that if you would only wear some decent, uh, I mean, uh, you could be utterly charming except for your... Never um... mind, Abigail, I get it. But you know, I'm awfully hard to please. And you, <laughs> you lucky girl, they can throw any old thing on you. <laughs> And they usually do. I'd give four bits for a handful of catnip. <laughs> of course, Mrs. McGee, my milliner might be just a trifle uh, beyond your, uh, well, that is, she's horribly expensive, you oh, know. Oh, I can see that, Abigail. I could never afford to wear the kind of hats you do. Well, I mean, of course, that anyone in my social position... Can must... get away with almost anything. <laughs> Isn't it the truth? When you've had enough folks, holler and I'll toss in the towel. <laughs> In fact, Mrs. McGee, I was telling my modiste about you, too. She insists that I bring you in. She has an amazing knack at draping difficult figures. Well, uh, she must have, Abigail. And if she can do as much for me as she's done for you, well, believe me, somebody ought to give her the business. <laughs> yes, she will appreciate it. She... <gasps> Why, good heavens, Mr. McGee, I never noticed. What's that? How did you acquire all those bandages and splints? Oh. What happened? Oh, well, no. he's suffering from a career end collision, Abigail. <laughs> we'll explain it to you later. In the meantime, let you and I go shopping together sometime. I know some dandy places. <laughs> all right, my dear. We'll go to my favorite shop first and take in the rummage sales on the way home. So oh, goodbye. <laughs> burns me up, McGee. She tries to give the impression that she has more of everything than anybody else has. Yeah, she's right if you're talking about chins. <laughs> well, come on, you poor lad. Do you feel all right? Frankly, no. I don't. I feel like... Well, I... hello there, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> hello, Mr. McGee. Oh, hello, Mr. Wimple. Hi, Wimple, chimp. Which way did my wife go? Oh, what do you mean, Mr. Wimple? We haven't seen your wife. Well, my goodness, Mr. McGee. You mean you got so bruised and battered all by yourself? Well, we were taking 
seen some old movies, Mr. Wimple, and McGee took a couple of bad falls. Wait till you see the prints. You'll think they're terrific. Sweetie Face and I took some home movies last week ourselves. She was making some educational pictures for the police department. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu, you know. Uh, black and white? No. Black and blue. Clear up to all you mean the pictures. <laughs> They were black and white. <laughs> you sure take a lot of punishment for a little guy, Wimp. I wish I could get over the effects as quick as you do. Oh, it's just a matter of regular exercise. <laughs> Mr. McGee, every morning before breakfast, I take a two-mile run. Oh, do you really? Where do you run? Oh, just around the dining room table. <laughs> Sweetie face is so irritable when she gets up. Mm -hmm. She must have caught you this morning, Wimp. You're walking kind of stiff. Oh, I'm just suffering from housemaid's knee, Mr. McGee. Housemaid's knee? Yes. Last night, I tracked in some mud, and Sweetie face mopped up the kitchen floor with me. <laughs> well, I simply must be getting home, folks. I've got to help Sweetie face with her homework. What's she studying? Part 4, Section 6 of the new police manual. How to throw tear gas bombs. Oh. If you're going past this evening, stop in and we'll all have a good cry. Oh, my. He certainly has what it takes, hasn't he, McGee? Yeah, but I'd hate to have to take what he gets. <laughs> Oh, here's the home movie shop, Molly. Well, hold the door for me, will you? All right. I don't want to bump this elbow again. Uh, yes, sir? What can I... Oh, you poor chap. Let me help you to a chair. Here. Thanks, but I, I was kind of wore off. Yes, I've got to get him home to bed as soon as we get through here. Now, yeah. uh, what could I do for you folks? Well, I I'm Mr. McGee, bud. Remember? You sent me out that camera and those films. Oh, yes. We picked them up a couple of hours ago, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, just a minute, and I'll see if the prints are ready. McGee. You look awfully pale. Can you hold out till we get home? Oh, sure. Wait till them Hollywood guys take a gander at them prints. They'll tumble all over themselves trying to sign me up. Oh, Mr. McGee. Yeah, bud, you got my films? Let me see them. Hey, you got a projection room here? Will... Just a minute, please. You can't expect to get them till you pay for them, McGee. Oh, excuse me. Oh, you pay him, Molly. I'm too stiff to reach into my pocket. Yeah, <laughs> you usually are. <laughs> How much do we owe you, sir? Uh, $3 for camera rental, $18 for film, and nothing for the advice. What advice? McGee, the next time you try to take pictures, first take the rubber cap off the lens. Why, bud? Your films are all blank. Oh, my. Awesome. <laughs> your present kitchen linoleum. If it's fairly new, you'll certainly want to take good care of it and make it last a long time. If it's old, all the more reason now for treating it properly. Linoleum should not be cleaned by the old-fashioned scrubbing method because continuous scrubbing only ruins it. It should be kept clean with a floor polish that also protects it. And that polish is Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Glow coat guards linoleum and other floor surfaces against wear and dirt, prolongs their life. You'll notice when you try Johnson's Glow Coat that it has a lasting luster, a smooth, even surface that doesn't chip because the Glow Coat film is flexible, not brittle. And you'll see that Glow Coat is economical, that a little goes a long way. These are just some of the reasons we say there's only one Johnson self-polishing Glow Coat. Try it, won't you? over, McGee, whilst I rub some more liniment on your back. No. Okay. You think you'll ever go on with your movie career, dearie? No. i just been thinking, Molly. Remember that newsreel we saw last week of Mussolini making a speech on that balcony? Yes. I could never be that funny, could I? No. That's what I thought. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Don't put it off any longer. Decide right now to take better care of your car's paint job. 
It's so easy now, thanks to Johnson's Car New, the sensational auto polish that both cleans and polishes in one application. Two jobs at once in quick time. No program of better car maintenance is complete without looking after the outside as well as what's under the hood. Buy a can of Johnson's Car New very soon from your regular Johnson's Wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station. Car New is spelled C-A-R-N-U. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.